Do you want to create dynamic and interactive websites without the complexity of traditional JavaScript frameworks? Would you like to... Listen, I just want to make a video about HTML and I made the script and it's not turning out the way that I want it. But if I get through it, I promise I'll give you a demo of, you know, this thing on the screen. So if you want any of those things that I just mentioned, so if you're trying to build interactive or if you're trying to focus more on your server side skill, HTML is actually an incredible solution because it makes it very easy to add a lot of interactivity. The next part of my script says, hello everyone. Welcome back to our channel, the go-to place for web development tips and tricks and tutorials. If you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you won't miss our future content. Today we're going to be exploring an exciting tool that's been gaining traction amongst developers. It promises a more straightforward approach to web interactivity. That was my fancy. So it's bringing the power of dynamic web straight into HTML. Uh, without the complexity of, you know, all the JavaScript. Quite a few benefits to using HTMX. A few of them are that you maintain less JavaScript code, and this also reduces the complexity of the projects that you're working on. Uh, and you might be wondering, how is this different from React? So HTMX allows you to stay within the HTML and you leverage the natural capabilities of the browser. We're gonna have these very specific uh, tags that you're gonna be able to add to literally any HTML element. And then you just specify the URL or the endpoint. But the beauty of this is that you can have essentially just HTML that you write and plug it into an API that's completely outside of this. And that's kind of the interesting thing about this. And right here, you'll also notice that they have a trigger, the trigger for shooting off the request. In this case, it's just click. And since there's not actually a CSS selector for an object, it's just telling you that it's coming from this object. So when you click this button, it will issue a post request to this endpoint. Whatever comes back is actually going to get swapped out. In this case, it's going to do the outer HTML. So it's going to replace the entire element. These I feel like are pretty self-explanatory because they're your, your typical request, get, post, put, patch, delete. Each one of those is gonna do pretty much what it sounds like. So it's more about how you manage the API on that front. We can take a look at some of the examples that they have here. Click to edit is probably gonna be the more common one. So we have a form that we want to submit and I'll just scroll down right to the bottom for a name that we're trying to submit. And then I could change this to common, Joe common and submit. And then this seems like it's happening on the front end. So if we do this and this is actually Mary, very common. It seems like it's happening on the front end, but it actually is issuing a request to slash contact slash edits. And then on the back end, all it's doing is sending the actual entire form. So your API is sending this back the entire form. Now the form, uh, the submit button will trigger this post request. And the interesting thing about HTMX is that it will automatically grab any elements that accept input. So if you have sliders, or in this case, inputs or text areas or any of that sort of thing. It will automatically grab all that stuff, take the name and send that out along with the request. In this case, we have these values that get pre-populated so that when we send it back, so when I clicked at it, this is already pre-filled out. If you don't have those values in there, then it'll just kind of bring back this, um, this form. You would have to add that logic on the back end that you string format this or template engine this to include all those values. But it's very flexible. And I actually have a different way that I prefer that also adds some of that functionality into the front end. But the fact that you can actually do this at all is pretty interesting. It's very interactive the user experience. Uh, active search is another one. So if we go down here, okay. basically as soon as you key up, so if I type TI, as soon as I release I, it's gonna send TI to the API. The API is gonna do its magic to search for those, it's gonna send back whatever it finds as HTML. So what makes it magic is that we can choose the events that are triggering these things. So what I found is that you can put these requests wherever you want and then point to them from other elements. I just wanted to very quickly go over this stuff and then just like magic, and just like magic, I almost knocked this thing off. So that was our introduction to HTMX, an innovative of tool that is changing the way we look at web interactivity and if you found this video helpful please uh i'm literally reading it i can't read it please give it a thumbs up and share it with your fellow developers so don't forget to subscribe hit that bell icon to get notified and until next time happy coding